Well, good morning. Happy Mother's Day. We're glad you're all here. Uh, it's my privilege. My name is Andy Dudley, and it's my real privilege to be here this morning. This is, this is certainly a day to celebrate moms and show our deep appreciation. But we also recognize that this is a very difficult day for many. Um, I've been reminded of it uh, several times during the week as I've spoken with people and, uh, and this morning as well. It's an annual reminder of, of, of loss. Maybe you suffer with infertility or you've lost children through miscarriage or you've lost a mom this past year and this is the first Mother's Day without her. Or you suffer the loss of relationship with one of your children or your relationship with your mom is complicated or strained. My hope is that if you're struggling this morning that while everyone else seems to be enjoying Mother's Day that you find hope and healing and encouragement from the Lord and other people. Um, so let's pray and then we'll begin. Heavenly Father, uh, <clears throat> this is a joyous day uh, that we can, can praise your name and we can celebrate mothers. And Lord, uh, and help us to do that this morning. And, and Father, those that are struggling this morning, we ask that you'd catch them, that, uh, that you would encourage them and heal them and give them hope. So we lift them up to you today and that all of us together uh, could really uh, enjoy this day and enjoy your word. And I just ask for your hand upon uh, this message now and uh, uh, in your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Mother's Day verse is from Proverbs 31 and it describes this, uh, that describes this virtuous woman. And uh, verse 28 simply says, her children rise up and, and call her blessed. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Today we want to, to bless mothers, but in the process, better understand this word blessing. Uh, several weeks ago and before Adam asked me to do this message while he's in Romania, I was studying uh, this word blessed. It was for a, a, a devotion we were doing, uh, this word blessed that you see in this verse, and so that's why I gravitated to it today for the topic. I've been looking at this passage from number six. It's a familiar passage probably to many of you. And it says this. It says, this is how you're to bless the Israelites. You're to say that to them, the Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look with favor on you and give you peace. This is in this way, they will pronounce my name over the Israelites and I will bless them. So, so I wondered this question as I read this passage, and I'll ask you, and we'll begin the topic, today's topic here. Do these verses actually mean something? That's, that's missaid. Uh, let me say it a, a different way. Rather, is, 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 is the blessing that's said here effectual? Is it effective? Does it actually do something in the lives uh, of the people that are being blessed? What does this word, bless, blessing, blessed, actually mean? Culture doesn't help us. You know, in the common vernacular, the word is used to indicate a, a wish of good fortune upon the one receiving the blessing, a, a wish of good fortune. The dictionary says, bringing pleasure, contentment, happiness, uh, and again, good fortune. It just seemed pretty shallow, doesn't it? Um, and worse, worse is, worse is this is the sneezing thing. You know how did God, how did God bless you ever become a thing after you sneeze? Yeah, I, I could I, I used to know and I couldn't remember, so I looked it up. You know how did it start? And most of you probably know this, uh, and there are several explanations. But in the Middle Ages, people used to believe that a sneeze caused someone to momentarily expel their soul out of their body. By the way, I've heard some of you sneeze, and that is a distinct possibility. <laughs> but, you know, God bless you, or bless you, is used as protection so that the devil doesn't snatch, snatch the soul. Oh, boy. <clears throat> well, we in the Christian community probably don't help in the biblical defining and applying of these words, bless, blessing, and blessed. I'm wondering, at the very least, we overuse the word and we lose the meaning. We end telephone conversations with, be blessed, or have a blessed day, or blessings on you. And I'm not saying that that is wrong, but the question here, are we minimizing the word? 
people that, you know, people say, be blessed, or when you greet someone, uh, you might ask, well, how, how are you? And well, without hesitation, they'll say, uh, they'll say something like, well, I'm blessed and highly favored. You know, if, highly favored. If someone said that to me, I would ask, are, is, are, is your name Mary or what? You can see where I'm going. So is it possible that we as followers of Christ have become too casual or flippant when, with the word that is so rich in biblical meaning? So I've already asked the question, is, is it effective? Is it effectual? Does it have impact <clears throat> when you see it in the scriptures? Here's another question. Are blessings for today? Or is your life blessed? What, what, how would you answer that? Another question. When I am in the midst of some difficult thing, does that mean I'm not blessed? Last question. Uh, <clears throat> let me set the stage for this one. You're at a Brewers game. It's, the, it's, it's a home game. It's the middle of the seventh. And uh, they're ahead, and it's been a fun experience. By the way, a side note, uh, it's pretty safe to say that for a number of reasons, you're probably not having a bud. <laughs> and up to the mic steps Bob Kozlowski from Brewers Guest Services, and he sings this. Here are the words in the handwriting of the original composer, Irving Berlin. We couldn't sing them today. We couldn't even play it because these are copyrighted, but it's this. And you know the song, God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. And Bob will hit every note as he rises uh, of the last line, God bless America, my home, sweet home. So here's the question. Is America blessed by God? I feel, I feel like that question is sort of hanging in the air. <laughs> and you want to go, yes, it is, but no, it's just all this other. Yes, it is, but oh, there's this stuff. And <clears throat> Maybe if I asked it like kneel, as you would in front of a sovereign or a king in early times to receive a blessing. We see it used like this in the very first book of the Bible, at cre creation. Uh, and I've listed seven bullet points, and by the way, in your sermon notes to better understand this. And the first bullet point is this, is in the Bible, God is the source of all blessings. Genesis 1.20 says this. Let the, God said this, he said, let the water swarm with living creatures and let the birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the large sea creatures and every living thing, every living creature that moves and swarms in the water according to their kinds. And he also created every winged creature to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them. And he said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters of the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. They did, did they not? So, yes, obviously, uh, and it's, uh, it was effective, and it's, it was, it's that way too today. And then God blesses Adam with the same blessing, basically, and the garden is blessed first and foremost by God's presence. Relation all in the garden was and is devastating. The curse that follows this act of rebellion is directly tied to blessing. <clears throat> And purpose for his creation is directly tied to us. We cannot escape the ramifications. Blessing was impacted. So life would be difficult from here on out for men and for women. The woman's punishment would directly impact her ability to carry out her mission of being a mother. Pain in childbirth wasn't the only result. The impact of the fall would include difficulties for herself and her children. The early Old Testament women would see son killing son. They'd experience infertility, have children in conflict, lose children, not survive childbirth, and more. 
I envision these Old Testament mothers saying, I didn't think motherhood was going to be quite like this. And maybe some of you have the, had those same thoughts. For the man, the ground is cursed, and he and we struggle against it all of our life to make it produce. So the blessings of creation are still intact, but there would be great difficulty. And as we move uh, through Genesis and Noah, we, we see uh, God promising Noah the same blessings, and he's starting, recreate, he's starting to uh, earth creation all over again. And then in chapter 5, 12, we come to Abram, whose name would be changed to Abraham. And they said, God, not, <clears throat> the Lord said to Abraham, go from your country and your kid to kindred and your father's house to the land I'll show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be blessed. <clears throat> and you will be a blessing. And I will bless those who have blessed you and I will curse those who curse you. In all the families of the earth, uh, they, they, in you they shall be blessed. Of course, that bl- the greatest blessing to come from Abraham and his line to the, to the earth would be our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, our Savior and Lord. But Abraham must first obey. Abraham, go. Abraham must first obey to receive these blessings and promises. And God is calling him to go, and he goes. He obeys. So this principle that we arrive at early is this. Throughout, uh, throughout scriptures, his divine blessing is tied to faith-driven obedience to what God says. It's tied to a relation, a right relationship with God, obeying and a right, right relationship. So we can fill in a couple more sermon uh, uh, points on your outline. Number two and three, to be blessed by God necessitates a right relationship with him. And number three, God's blessing is that experienced in two categories, creation, we saw that, and covenant. The covenant is that right relationship. You could take a pencil and you can draw from covenant to right relationship a line. Covenant is an agreement between two parties who are in relationship. The new covenant, the new covenant that we experience is God's promise of forgiveness and his provision for it, uh, for, uh, for forgiveness of our sins through his son, Jesus That's what he's providing, and to all that accept it, that's us. That's the covenant. By the way, that's the gospel. That's the gospel. The whole message that you hear today will make so much more sense if you've taken that step. If you have any questions about it, if you're wondering about it, if you do understand it and you haven't done it, I pray that you follow up on any of those steps, and then that happens in your life. So you can make a strong case for faith-driven obedience and the certainty of blessing. Like our first parents in the garden, Abraham's obedience secured God's blessing for himself and his descendants. The themes of land and offspring and blessing persist uh, to Isaac and to Jacob and the children of Israel. So our next observation is this <clears throat> about blessing. Uh, number four in your bullet points there in your sermon notes is we see we see three, actually, we see three ways that blessings happen in Scripture. It's actually bullet point four, five, and six, and I'll just verbally give you five and six. That's people, God blesses people, people bless God, and people bless people. Those are, those are what we're going to find. And this is the first, God blesses people. <clears throat> Number six is that verse that we read to begin with here from Numbers uh, uh, 24, as uh, uh, that blessing uh, that, we, that, that God gave the Levites to pronounce on Israel. Point B here, God actually blesses humanity and creation in Genesis. Uh, so, I hope that makes sense. You know, humanity is blessed, and then God blesses Abraham. And <clears throat> when God blesses humanity, it's not a Request. It's authoritative. He said, be fruitful and multiply. And to Abraham, he said, I will bless you. So notice that when God blesses people or creation, when God blesses directly, it's it's an authoritative pronouncement of God's presence, his favor, and his activity. It's a statement made, not a request asked. It's a relationship. Relationship with God is always the pivotal point of blessing. God's blessing is always effectual 
but it often awaits, awaits human obedience to become active. See that last uh, point there on the bottom? Just let that sort of sink in. God's blessing is always effectual, but it, it often awaits human obedience to become active. Think about that in your lives. We can think about it in the lives of Scripture here. God has a timing involved uh, with blessing as it unfolds, and, but it always starts with human obedience. So here is the scripture that uh, prompted my study. Let's just look at it closely because this, this, this blessing from Numbers is uh, um, uh, uh, just a, a very, very uh, valuable set of scriptures in our lives, and we'll speak it at the end of this service. So the Lord spoke to Moses, and he says, he says speak to Aaron and his, and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the children of the people of Israel, and you shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So shall they put my name upon the people of Israel, and I will bless them. By the way, some English translations, you know, in the past you've heard this at the end of sermons, and they say, may the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you. That word may is not in the original Hebrew. This is an authoritative pronouncement. It's like, the Lord bless you. Uh, and it's, it's not a request. This is God saying uh, that, that, uh, that this, is, this is what will happen. This is rather God or authoritatively blessing his people. So there's a, that's a big difference, just in translations. The Lord bless you. It recognizes that all blessings come from God and keep you or protect you. To be kept by God, to be, tech, to be kept by the Lord, ensures life and peace and success. And then this, the Lord make his face to shine upon you. When you see the risen Lord, when you see the descriptions of it in Scripture, whether it be the Old Testament or the New, you see this shining Christ, this shining face coming from our risen Lord, uh, and it even adds more valuable to this verse. But uh, when, when we shine our face upon someone, we're beaming, and we're pleased with them, and it signifies the Lord shining his face upon him. Um, and to be gracious to you, when God smiles on us, we know we can be assured of his graciousness. Grace is a big deal in the lives of Christians and forgiveness of sins and our continual forgiveness of sins. Uh, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. It references the face again that to lift up his countenance that he looks, he looks on you. He sees you. You wonder at times, does the Lord see what's going on in my life? He does see what's going on in my life. This is a valuable verse. Uh, to know that God looks at you, that he's well pleased, not only because of who you are, not because of who you are or what you've done, but because you're in Christ. There is no greater source of power and peace. And give you peace, that peace, that shalom, that, that, that God's word for wholeness and goodness and satisfaction in life. It's like that abundant life that Jesus promised in John 14 is peace I, I, I leave with you, peace I give you, not as the world gives you, uh, but I give you peace. So let not your hearts be troubled, let you, nor be afraid. And then it ends with, so shall my name uh, be on the children of Israel. To be blessed by God is to have his name on you. It was Yahweh in the Old Testament. It's the Lord Jesus Christ or Yahshua in the New. And it's to be identified with who he is in his nature. This was, and it's a great gift to have God's name upon you. So, God promised to bless according to these words. These words are appropriate for pronouncement over congregations, and they've been so for, uh, for uh, all, all New Testament times. And more importantly, every believer should remember that we have a high priest in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, who lives forever to pray for us and to bless us. Usage number two, people bless God. People bless God. Um, is found a lot in Psalms, you know, oh, you know, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Again, that word bless, you can, can, you know, think about it from a kneeling position, receiving a blessing, and the, and the person that's being blessed here reciprocates and blesses the Lord, it's, it's a, and thanks the Lord. So you can picture, have a picture of that in your mind, of gratitude. In the Old Testament, uh, the 
there's quite a few examples in Deuteronomy. When you eat and you, and you are full, you will bless the Lord your God for the good land that he's given you. In the Psalms, bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with majesty and wonder. In the new heavens and the new earth, we see it in Revelations 5, I heard in heaven. Uh, I heard every creature in heaven and on earth uh, and under the earth and on the sea and everything in them say, blessing and honor and glory and power be to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. God's people bless him and declare him as the one who is blessed and should be blessed for so many reasons. Uh, it's, it's, it's wrapped up with thanksgiving uh, for, to him for what he's done. So whether all those, all the all the ramifications of what he is for us, forgiveness and salvation and keeping us, a place in the new heavens and the new earth for eternity, and all of the endless physical and spiritual blessings. Then usage number three, people bless people. People bless people. Um, an example is her children rise up and, and call her blessed, uh, that verse that uh, we're sort of focusing on a little bit today for mothers. So God blesses people as people ask the Lord to do that. God blesses people as other people ask that he does that. People bless different uh, people. is a little bit different than when God blesses people. When we do this, we're asking God to bless others. He's not obligated to do that, but we're asking him to do it. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Uh, the, the section of Proverbs is describing this incredibly virtuous and industrious woman. And in this verse, her children and then her husband join in praise of her. Um, it's a little bit different word for blessing than we've been looking at, but it still means praise, and we still ask God to bless them. Her children and her, and her husband now, they rise up out of respect for her and to be heard, to honor her, to praise her. They esteem her and declare that she is living out what God intended a mother to be. That's what we see in these verses. You know, mothers do such a better job of explaining all that it means to be a mother because they live it. You know, and they know physically and emotionally and spiritually what it takes and what it means. And I, I love the skit that was done. And it gets at some of that. But all the demands and the dreams and the disappointments and the frustrations and the sleeplessness and the worries and the joys, etc., 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 but from the outside, from the outside, what I see uh, and what others see, what we all see is, to, is enough to be utterly, utterly amazed and eternally grateful. I hope, mothers, that you really know how much of a blessing you are to your children. Probably the greatest influence in our lives, of course, would be our mothers. She shapes us spiritually and Physically and emotionally, it's, it's just not, it's not hard for us to think of the many ways that we've been blessed by our mothers. In this verse, her children know, the, who know her firsthand, they're eyewitnesses, they've, they've seen all of her faults, all of her virtues, her strengths, her weaknesses, they've received her loving care, her affection, her discipline, they that know her most. They that know her most intimately rise up to be heard. That's my mother. That's my mother. They rise up to praise her and ask God's blessing. For them, there's, there's none like her. So we're going to do that um, in, in just a bit. We're going to rise up and call our mothers blessed. Uh, one more point in your, out, you know, in your sermon notes about blessing, and that is this, that God's blessing have always been both physical and spiritual. Divine built blessing in the Bible has always been that because it's fixed on the reality of fullness of life in the presence of God. We're, we're whole beings. We are, have a physical side, we have a spiritual side, so the blessings are going to come physically, materially, and spiritually. In the Old Testament, to be blessed is to be granted special favor by God, resulting in joy and prosperity, or they're more material. In the New Testament, however, the emphasis is more on spiritual rather than on the material. Paul says in Ephesians, 
Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly places, in the heavenly realms, with every spiritual blessing in Christ. He chose us before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Um, Peter says this in 1 Peter, don't repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but on the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. And yet, even though the New Testament is filled with spiritual blessings, there are, there's still the material of the physical side to it. We see that um, in 2 Corinthians. And, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things and at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Now he that supplies seed to the sower and bread to the uh, for, for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and enlarge your harvest of righteousness. So blessings are both spiritual, are physical and spiritual. In the Old Testament, they tend to be a little more uh, physical, and in, the, in, 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 the, in, in the, New, the New Testament, more spiritual, but there's a mixing of both uh, as, as, we, as we move through the Scriptures. So let's just wrap this up here. Have we arrived at some kind of a definition of blessing? I like this, and uh, uh, um, I put it on, on the bottom of your page. You know, what, it, what is blessing then? What is blessing? Scripture shows us that blessing is anything that gives, uh, anything that, that, that gives uh, us, uh, makes us fully satisfied in him, anything that draws us closer to Jesus, anything that helps us relinquish the temporal and hold on more tightly to the eternal. And often it is in the struggles and the trials, the aching disappointments, the unfulfilled longings that best enable us to do that. Or simply, blessings are God's favor poured out on your life in countless ways. So along the way, have we begun to answer our questions? Are blessings effectual? Are they effective? For those in covenant relationship, for those in right relationship with God, uh, yes, they are effective. And we are whole beings living in relationship with him. So his blessings are both physical and they're spiritual. Uh, that being said, God's blessing is always, is always effectual, but it often awaits, remember that line, it often awaits human obedience to become active. I would also add this, that it's in God's timing that God's blessings unfold. Remember Sarah? They, you know, they had the promise of all these children and their descendants becoming as the stars in the sky, and yet they didn't have a son, and they wouldn't have a son until very much so later in life. The timing, it's God's timing when blessings unfold in your life. Uh, and you could say that even with the Lord Jesus as he was forecast for so many years ahead, so many centuries ahead from when he actually came. So are, are blessings effectual? They are. Are they effective? Can I, say, can, can I say that I am blessed by God? Can you say that you're blessed by God? I hope that your response certainly is a wholehearted yes. Um, maybe the only reason you wouldn't feel that way is you're in some kind of difficulty right now. Like that question asked, you know, when things aren't going well, does it mean that I'm not blessed by God? James uh, actually addresses this in the first chapter of the book that he writes, of the letter he writes, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. So you're under trial and you're blessed. Yeah, okay, okay. There's a spiritual part to this, obviously. It's not a material blessing. I'm suffering right now, but I'm blessed. Blessed is the one who per per perseveres under trial, having stood the test, that per person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Or the many verses in the, uh, the uh, Sermon on the Mount, as Jesus in chapter 5 of Matthew said, you know, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs are the kingdom of God. Blessed are those that mourn, for they'll be comforted. Or they are, you're blessed when you're insulted uh, and when you're persecuted uh, and falsely spoken of uh, because of me. Or the last paragraph in your sermon notes uh, that we just, just read also addresses this. 
What is blessing then? Anything that draws me closer to Jesus. And often it is the struggles and the trials, the aching disappointments, and the unfulfilled longings that best enable that to happen. So I hope that when if you are going through something now, you sense his, him close and his presence and his blessing. Lastly, we ask this. Is America blessed by God? Well, that obviously is a study for uh, another day in a, in, a, in a longer discussion. But, <clears throat> but I, I probably know what most people, well, is on most people's minds. Yes, uh, we would like to say that God's blessing is on this country in, in so many ways, or at least has been in the past. But with uh, the cultural rot, the degradation that... Uh, that's going on right now, and we feel a loss of freedoms many times. The political and financial worlds are always seem to be in, just in, uh, unstable right now, etc., etc., etc. It's easy to wonder if we're still blessed. Our founding, one of our founding fathers and our second president, John Adams, said, Our Constitution was meant only for a, a moral and a religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. And may, may, maybe that's where uh, um, this wandering, this wandering away from God is what bothers us most uh, when we think about the state of our country. So, yes, I understand the dilemma. Uh, and I encourage you in this that, you know, redouble your prayers for your country. You know, ask God to forgive us and uh, to, to, to right our ship uh, and to bless us. And, and, and the next time you're singing, God bless America, don't sing it as a patriotic song. Sing it as a prayer, uh, as one of God's people asking God to bless a people, this country. It's a song meant to be sung in adversity, as it was in World War II, as it has sprung up again post-9-11. Remember what it says as you pray this prayer. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night through the night, through the night with the light from above. I encourage you to do that. Our worship team is coming up, and we're going to conclude our service uh, as a people that bless the Lord in song, and then we're going to dis- and we'll dismiss and we'll receive God's blessing uh, as, as uh, 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 God blessing his people. But first... Uh, Let's people bless people. Let's, let's rise up and let's call our mothers blessed. And let's do it in prayer, if you'd, if you'd allow me to lead us in prayer. <clears throat> Father, we rise up, first of all, to thank you and praise you. We thank you for the so many blessings in our lives. We thank you for the sending of the blessing. Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins so that we can accept that forgiveness and have right relationship, covenant relationship with you. And we rise up right now to call our mothers blessed. Father, we see what a woman goes through and we are amazed. We thank you for their courage, their endurance, their unique, loving, and nurturing makeup, their strength, and so much more. Father, what you have made in mothers is amazing. As we expressed earlier and now pray, uh, those that struggled this morning while everyone else seems to be having a happy Mother's Day, Father, we ask that you would give them the healing, hope, and the encouragement that they need. Finally, Father, uh, permit me to read this prayer from a young man for his mother. Father, let Uh, these words that he wrote, let them be our words now. Hear these words as our words. God, I'm grateful for Mama and pray that you would help me to better honor her every day. Thank you that despite not always getting along, our love has endured. 
Show me how I can express appreciation for what she has done. Help me to see all the things that she has done. God, please help me practice patience when I feel like she's being too much or too bossy or too much like a mom. Honestly, God, who would I be without mama? I pray to you now, God, asking you to bless the remainder of her life. Please bring her comfort when sickness and body aches occur. Please give her continued direction for her life. Keep her mind renewed. God, I ask that the remainder of her life be enriched, that she may still feel like she has purpose to fulfill despite having accomplished so much already. God, thank you for Mama. Amen.